So the question was, uh, how am I doing? It's great. I, I, I'm, uh, I, I come to Florida fairly regularly, and it was nice to be not as humid as I expected it. So uh, nice. Because I saw something on the, the weather uh, last week. With my, uh, my mother lives up in Spring Hill near Tampa, and it was like 95% humidity there. Oh my God. God. <laughs> I'm going there next, I mean, after this weekend. I hope it dies down before you get there. I'm, I know that terrible feeling. Well, that's why I never moved to Orlando. <laughs> Yeah, but no, it's Florida. Every every other day is a crap toss. It's just, yeah. is it going to be humid? Is it going to be rainy? Then humid? It's, anyway. Yes. I remember when I was really young, uh, 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 my, my folks, we came on a vacation. So my mom grew up in Miami. So we came out from the West Coast and we went down to see where she grew up and then we went up to Disney World. And we were out on the beach at the Contemporary Hotel and it's like 3.30 in the afternoon and my mother looks up at the sky and she goes, pack it up. I'm like, what? And pack it up, it's going to rain. It's blue sky. No, pack it up. It's going to rain. And by the time we packed up and got to the hotel, the clouds rolled in, the sky opened up, and everyone's panicking. There's lightning. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then five minutes later, it stopped. Yeah, and then she would have scared me. Don't swim in any of the water because things in there will kill you. So, <laughs> yeah. I think I had a and then she movie. begged me to move here. So, <laughs> <laughs> now, so what do you guys want to know? I'm, I'm probably the most curious one here. Um, I'm. I love anime, I love voice acting, love writing, and I just, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm in the middle of working on an engineering degree, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get something, yeah. since I was already starting it, and as I slowly came to more and more conventions, I've been watching more and more anime recently, I've always loved writing, even though that's the complete opposite for what I'm running for, and I was just wondering what, tra not training, but like, expertise or areas or what do you personally work on or focus on when like translating from a Japanese subbing into an English dub? Alright, well there's there's two different things you're talking about there. One is writing and one is adapting. Okay. Okay. And adapting is all about dialogue and it's a great way to learn how to write because the story and the plot's are already handled for you. So you don't need to deal with that. You're dealing with dialogue. And what I try to focus on is on how would a person speak I mean, I mean there, is a, you, there is a way to write, and there is a way to speak. And there, there was the difference. One is very kind of crisp and formal, and the other one is... And so you want to write dialogue in a way in which the character speaks. If this one is formal, then you use no contractions. In this one, you do. And, it's, and, it's, and really, it's an acting exercise in terms of dialogue. It's getting into the character and kind of feeling that. Now, when you're adapting to, an, to anime, you're also having to... You have the technicalities of having to make it match the lip flaps, so you have to not fool yourself and do just speaking slower to make it work because the actor can't do that. So mostly it's learning how people talk and how, and how people communicate emotions specifically. I mean, the problem is, is most actors and writers focus on words and the, and the words are really unimportant. It's the emotion that those words are conveying. It's, what's, it's what brings the audience back over and over again. So when you're dealing with dialogue, you do that. When you're writing, the same thing goes with the plot. You want to be you want a plot that's going to move you. If it doesn't move you, it's not moving the audience. I don't care if it's correct. Because you go take creative writing classes in college and they're going to show you the correct way to write. And that's great. So you can write like everybody else. You have your own unique voice. Use that if you want to do this professionally. Writing like everybody else does not get you anywhere professionally. Okay. Yeah, no, there have been animes and uh, I, I've listen to a couple of them where I have nothing against the voice actresses or actors, but there's no emotion. Like yeah. the giant monsters running down the lane, the, the Japanese is actually screaming, you can hear the fear, but yeah. in English is just like, ah, and it, was, it takes me out of it. I'm just like, I, I, I don't want to say, obviously I have no experience, but I want to be able to get into the industry and make it so that doesn't happen. More well, they, they, it depends on who you go and what they're, look, an awful lot of anime is, is produced because it'll make them money. Yeah. And they don't really give a crap. Whether it's good, bad, whether it matches the sink or not, just get it done and get it out there. Um, there are others like Anaplex who cares. They give us the time to do it right. We look for the nuance. We look for the ways to do it correctly. And, and it depends really on, on whether, on how much profit the company thinks they're going to, if they really think it's going to do well, then they'll spend the time and money. If they're not sure, then, then you get the crap. And unfortunately, you know, in, even in big movies, all these big $200 million super movies. Okay, that one's good. Those three are crap. This one's good. You know, it's kind of like that. So um, it's uh, there, and there are many people like Anaplex, like myself, the folks at Bang Zoom, some people at Studiopolis as well that are trying to really push for when we get a chance to do those kinds of shows, because that's not always appropriate to really spend time. And that's all I do these days. They give me all the emo shows, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. 
Yeah, I just finished Charlotte. Everyone's crazy. Oh, God, oh, yes. yes. I did that. I, uh, well, I, I was interested in that because I was Even God Eater. I just finished God Eater. And that's all angsty and stuff. Yeah. It's very they cool. They took a break. I, I got to rewatch it again for the first nine episodes because they took like a six month hiatus between episode nine and ten. Yeah. So I forgot everything. So yeah. I have to go back and watch it. But yeah, no, Charlotte was a good one because it was by the Key Studios who did Angel Beats and Clan Ad, and that's depressing. And uh, Lull in the Sea, that's a sleeper if you've never seen it. Another sweet, oh, sweet oh, film. No, what was the name? Love. It's called A Lull in the Sea. Original okay. Japanese name was Nagiyasu, but they yeah, changed okay, it. Okay, that's why I recommend it, yeah. It's, uh, it's really, yeah, yeah. It's one of those. <laughs> it's funny, I love my job in that respect. Yeah. If I have to do a screamy mech show, that's great. Let's get it done and go home. But when those shows, I'm like going, yeah, what's going to happen next? This yeah. is cool. <laughs> and oh, and, and, I, and if I get a Kari Walgren or one of those actors in there that could just yep. tear you apart with their voice. Yeah. That's my favorite well, I love day it. of the week. Well, her first role that I heard her in was from, again, Etika Seven as uh, an M&A. And, yeah. and that's another one where the story when like, around mid-season where uh, Etika's going through her Corallian development into like trying to run away, trying to find her place in life. And that's, yeah, it got uh, weird. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Do you have questions over there? You just kind of snuck in. I just want to make sure you're not ignored. No, good. You're good, okay. <laughs> this is the Q&A of me, and I'm Tony Oliver. Who's the person right next to you? Who's the person right next to you? I'm his host and moderator. I'm here to help out. Um. Yes. And I play Minato. Yes. <laughs> I love your jacket, though. Attack on Titan is a great show. I'm um, I'll just, I'll just leave slow. <laughs> 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 Hang out. Party with us. So anybody want any? Or we can keep talking if you got any questions. Sure. We'll just hear with them. All right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And I'm just checking into the career. So what else do you want to know? Um. Well, now that you bring bring up like studios getting involved with money and stuff, I was always worried about that because I know there's some shows where obviously yeah, you, you, you give less of crap, but. How, how common is that nowadays? Because I'm assuming you've been in it for, God, 20 years? Longer than you've been alive, I'm that sure. Is, <laughs> well, that way. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm curious. What, how often do you run into shows where it's, or what's the attitude given to it where it's like, uh, do this on your free time, or, oh, this is a really good one, focus solely on this, or where are the priorities? Like? Generally, those priorities are made before they get me involved. Okay. If, if, if they're going to get me involved, chances are they care about the show a little more because I do. Um, and uh, and I there's certain things that some producers are pushing for that I push against, and so they won't bring me in for those because I won't I won't work with an unadapted script, for instance. Okay. That's something that some of the producers are trying to do now, is uh, is just bring in the translations and have us kind of wing it in the booth. Okay. And unfortunately, that's yeah, it's more efficient and you can get it done cheaper that way, but the result is not good because you're rewriting on the fly. The, the actors, the, we don't know what's going on. You didn't have a writer sit down and kind of go through it and make sure everything's right. And, uh, and I push back against it. I refuse to do that. So okay. it's, uh, as an actor, I'll do whatever they want, but as a director, I won't do it that way. Okay, so yeah. okay, so you're able to, they'll, they'll literally like tell you, here's what we have. Are you able to do this? And then based on your, obviously your... Yeah, by now they know me. It. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair yeah, but uh, but taking out an adaptive script, for example, is that it, will they take take the simulcast, for example, with Funimation? Yeah. Um, are they giving you an unadapted script when you're actually also forced to simulcast at the same time? No, Funimation does not do unadapted scripts. They okay. do it right. But okay. I don't work. I don't, I, don't work I, I don't work for Funimation. Funimation, but in terms of the, the procedure, they do it in the correct procedure. Whether you like the shows or not, that's a whole other story. <laughs> oh no, every, no. I've I've seen shows from many studios where like I love them to death, and then there are other shows where I'm just like, why? And yeah. Said, yeah. No, but yeah, no. Animplex, for example, my favorite show is Gurren Log. I love that show to death. Thank it's, you. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. It's it's. I love An Animplex. I do like for that. that. Yep. <laughs> I need to get back to Fully Cooley because that's. Still six episodes of my life, I'll never get back. Um, it, it's one of those shows where it's just so outrageous that I can't take it seriously, but it makes it... You I gotta just, tell that to Steph if you haven't already. Oh, I'm sure. She directed and adapted that. So. No, no, again, again, it's good. The problem is, it's, I, I just, I'm terrible it's with those so kinds of shows. Oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the same thing. There's a show recently that came out called Sakamoto. My name is uh, Sakamoto, and that's another one where it just random stuff happens yeah. constantly. Yeah. I can only like take so too. much in one sitting. Yeah, see, I don't, I'm not... I'm a big fan of those. I mean, Kill a Kill, another story. You know, like we, we called it the studio Scream, a Scream. 
Because, <laughs> but uh, it's just a lot of angry people screaming at each other, and I don't really dig that too much. So it's, it's, uh, and the uh, underdress. Yeah, I'd rather get a little. Okay, no, no, that, that oh, obviously didn't work for me. But no, the, the thing that I love that show just because it's the same guys who made Gurren Lago, but actually just I like the action point story versus that. But yeah, you're right, there's a lot of screaming. Can argue that. Yeah. The cool thing about Gurren Lago is, is it was yeah. a combo, it was a hybrid because they had all the new style emo kind of characters. Yet it was an homage to old school anime and the mech shows and all that stuff, and they had a little bit of both. The only thing I had trouble with was at the end when they're starting to throw galaxies around. Yeah. It just got beyond the ability for my head to hold it, <laughs> and I part. had to direct it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, take, take scenes like that, for example, when, when you're directing actors, for example, do you direct like when you want them to say their lines? Like when just chit in the fan, or how, 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 what's the... Yeah, guys, okay. yeah. Yeah. When, yeah, when, the, when obviously when Galaxy is being thrown about, but you don't see any lips on screen, do you direct like when you want lines to be thrown, like put out, or how you want Yeah, them the to technical stuff is, is handled ahead of time. So we, we've had a, right, a spotter go through and spot all the, the, the translation. And what that means is they, they, they find exactly where that word starts, okay. and they mark down the time code for that, because everything's every frame is coded. And so the, all of that, where those go decide is decided ahead of time. As a director, when it's off camera and there's no specific sync, my job is to kind of, should it be a few frames this way or a few frames, you know, where does it feel right in, in terms of organic? I'm doing the fine tuning at that point. Um, and the way I direct, there's different directors do different things. The way I direct is I focus specifically on emotion. What the character's feeling, not how they sound. So if I want you to do a death scream, I'm not going to say, I want you to sound like this. Ah! Well, say I want a death screen, but you're 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 uh, you're uh, angry because you thought you were going to win. So add that to the screen. So because any, otherwise, any reaction, any movement, any sound you make that has no emotion is just a sound. And when I have uh, new actors in my classes, and we're doing reactions, and you know, I say, okay, I need you to to scream. They go, ah. <laughs> Or, or worse, they'll go ahead and scream, ah! But there's still nothing behind that. So you, you put a little tension, a little angst behind it, and ah! Now it has some meaning and some feel to it. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right. We try not to laugh. <laughs> you, know, you know, hey, bloopers, I love watching the bloopers because some of the stuff that uh, I, just that you have to say, or actually, no, Kill a Kill is a good example again because obviously the fan service and stuff is out there, and I've heard the bloopers from that. And one of them, well, was Anaplex just, wants us yeah. to do bloopers. They actually ask for them. You know what? So, yeah. You know what? Then, they're, then they're doing that, right? Where that's why I love those Viz so much. Does not want us to do them. They, they, they uh, think it disrespects the property, and that's their choice. And I, and I told you know, I get yeah, why I, I do I, it, but, uh, but, but I love Anaplex because they say get smart, get smart. Yeah. But well, then I just love, I just personally love bloopers because it makes you think like it, they're all human. They can mess up, or they can have fun while doing it. It's like you don't have to be that like, strict in the strict. In the never, story. never, yeah. never, never. never. I never, never get it in one. And especially on Gurren Lagann, specifically, that was the first time I worked with Anaplex and the first time I worked with Hitaway, who was the producer from Anaplex. And it took a while for us to find our legs, and, and uh, it, was a, it was really a difficult, and we were under the gun because we started late. It started with a different studio, and then it got jumped over to Bang Zoom. I was literally on vacation with my wife in Paris. Oh, <laughs> and it was the night before I was coming home, and I put the SIM card back in my phone because I had taken it out for the trip. Smart. And suddenly it's ringing, and it's Bang Zoom Studio saying, when do you land? <laughs> At 4 o'clock, come straight to the studio. <laughs> you pick up materials. You have two days to go through it, and we start recording the next day. And you have two weeks to get it on the air. So we, had, we were literally doing two, two episodes a week fast enough to get them on the air, and uh, and then before we could finally slow down. Now that involves pace. like, yeah, the, the script making, the directing. It's the insanely board. fast to do that that way. Now, and we were struggling. We were doing eight and 10 and 15 takes per line because we wanted it, they wanted it right, but we didn't have the time. Well, that, that just, I'm even more impressed because again, the dubbing of that show and the direction of that show is amazing. So yeah, like, the first damn. five to seven episodes were rushed. Yeah. The rest of them we took our time. And, and yeah. the old day after that, yeah, what comment is, uh, spoiler alert, dead. Don't say it. Uh, <laughs> he's a lighting spirit. <laughs> um, or in spiral spirit, um, but with, yeah, with that and then the scene together in the last episode. That is true. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yes. <laughs> and then, well, no, my depressing point is Nia because she's my favorite character. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, no, with the emotion there, it goes downhill, then it brings back up, and then happy, then betrayal. It's all over the damn place. But it, that's impressive if you had a rush. It's my favorite kind of show. That's why I, I was thrilled when they had me direct Fate Zero. That's it. Because it's it's that times ten. Yeah. It's so. But when I usually, you're getting back to your original question about adapting. Yeah. When I'm adapting anime, uh, generally, especially the lower budget stuff, 
I'm usually looking at kind of, okay, how am I going to have to fix this to make the story make sense? Because there's so many story jumps, you know, badly written in, in Japanese is just as bad as badly written in English. You know? And so I'm looking for ways to fix it and make it more entertaining or make the language work or whatever for us. And in Fate Zero, when I watched it down, I kind of sat back and went, oh, how do I not screw this up? Because it's perfect in Japanese. It's so well done that uh, we really try to, to not screw it up. <laughs> you know, kind, of, kind of honor it and stuff. No, no, it's, it's, yeah, no, it remains my favorite thing. Literally weeping in the studios as we're recording the last three episodes. It's, oh, it's that's like, wow. Yeah. <coughs> you, you say, yeah, I'd, I'd literally be in the same exact And it's Kari Waldron and, yeah. and, and, uh, uh, and why, yeah. Matt Mercer, who was supposed to be here but had a death in the family. That's why he's not here this weekend. Yeah, no, I, I literally just got the update on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. they, they put oh. it was from a, well, I'm not sure if he died yet, but he was on his way. It's yeah, yeah no, I, I, got the, I got the tweet earlier from, a, it wasn't even from Matt Mercer's Twitter page. It was from like uh, SO something like. Uh, yeah, he was supposed thing. to be here this weekend. Yeah, and unfortunately yeah. couldn't do it. So uh, good thoughts for him and his family. Yeah, um, our condolences. But, yes, but all but all of these we have you know powerhouse actors and a powerhouse script and a powerhouse visuals and it's just. I say it's good because really I, the best I, thing I, I have, I've on. only seen scenes from that show and that'll be perfect because I, I I enjoy watching English animation or English dubbed uh, anime when I know it's a nice like a nice good transition from Japanese to English. Yeah. Whereas sometimes I'll, I love the Japanese and then I hear the English and I'm just like, all right, back to Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think we did a good job with them. And, um, and the, uh, gotta get through the first couple episodes, talky, talky, talky. But episode three, it, I love it, story. it I love hits a major, very disturbing se sequence of scenes and from there it takes off. So, <laughs> uh, but, uh, again, my favorite thing I got in my entire career, that's Fate Zero. Even better than that. Guess I know what I'm watching next. So can't wait for the. Uh, there's one more sequel coming. And crossing my fingers, we get to do. Yeah, I know there's so. Fate Stay Night, Fate Zero. There's so many uh, of them. Well, for the original Fate Stay Night was yeah. not Anaplex. Yeah. They didn't handle it, and that was I did play Lancer in that, but somebody else directed it, and that was a little bit more anime-ish. It's more of the high schooly kind of stuff that you see in anime. Uh, Fate Zero was a completely different company doing it, and Anaplex picked it up, and that's dark. Yeah. It's dark and intelligent and really. Creepy. Some places hard to follow, um, and then uh, and then Unlimited Blade Works, which is the original story from a different point of view, a different story path, but done by the new people. So it's a kind of a blend of the two, um, and uh, and leads into the next one coming, which is Heaven's Field, if it ever comes here. Hopefully, it'll come to the states. Yeah. yeah, that's always a nice, yeah, thrilling wait where you like. But I've seen some footage from it. Holy. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like my mouth is hanging. <laughs> it's stuff you toe on your jaw, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I love shows like that. It, it's funny because you literally sound like just how I would when I'm talking anime with these guys. Because I love, I love running into a show where emotions take over. I don't, I, there's no shame in crying. I just love hitting that scene no. where you're falling in tears. As an actor, it's the most satisfying thing to do. Yeah, because you have to dig deep and yeah. you have to kind of get out of your own way and just kind of let it happen. And it's hard to do, but when you can accomplish it, it's very satisfying. <laughs> well, I know, well, I know a lot of you. Uh, you just you be, become so one with your character that you just you pretty much may as well be in the show because it's yes and no. I mean, you're one with the character for like that 18 seconds, mm -hmm. and then you know, we're back and we're joking, and then we're back into the character. <laughs> Except for on Zero, we couldn't do that. It was too intense. So, and, and Kari Walgren is amazing. When I got to work with her, she's. Uh, she was Saber in that. She's uh, she was in M&A. She's in every Disney movie. She's in Bolt. She's a Bolt. She's in a lot of stuff. And anyway, she's she's so good. She's one of these people where I can I can tell her, look, you want to play angry, but you're angry because you're embarrassed because this person said something that you know is true, but you're denying it. And she can play all of those layers, and you get it. And it's like I've been doing this 30 years. How do you do this? <laughs> um, but she gets in the zone. Literally, where she's just focused, I'll throw a direction at her, I can't even tell if she's heard it. She's just so focused in the zone and then it comes out of her mouth and it's brilliant. I, I bet that makes your life as a director way easier. Yeah, because I don't. I can really play with nuance now. Instead of, now you need to be louder. Or, no, you're not talking, you, you like that. I'm not giving basic things. She's got all that down. Now we can play with the, should it be just slightly, you know, a little tilted this way or slightly tilted that way. And those little tilts are where I find the magic that it really is. That's where the magic is. Actually, that'd be a, uh, another question I'm curious about. When you're taking multiple takes of uh, one scene and you 
say it this way, and you're like, okay, I like it, let's try it this way, and then you start comparing them, seeing which one's like the best one. If you obviously have the time to listen to multiple takes, you see how you can come at it from different angles. Or well, well, yeah, we don't ever do it in one take. Yeah, never, and, and because we're working, in anime, we're working with individuals, so it's one person in the booth at a time. So, uh, yeah, we'll have a chance to, in fact, I do a lot of combining from Color Frankensteining. Combining lots of takes, so we'll take the first sentence from here and the second sentence from there, and the reaction from the third take, and, and that's what the final. And when we have, like, I have a show. They brought an actor in, knew that they wanted to try out on the show that I'm directing right now. I can't say what the show is, but um, uh, she wasn't getting the part. She, she really wasn't getting it, and it was it was difficult. And the the the, pro, the performance that now exists on tape is the performance that the engineer crafted together by grabbing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this to make a, an acceptable take that, that fit in with everything else because the, the acting was so much weaker than everyone else around her. So, and that happens sometimes, you know, it's just, and this person's a good actor, it just it wasn't a part for them, you know, it just happens sometimes. But, um, but yeah, we do a lot of that. Uh, even, even the stuff I'm moving quickly, I'm, I'm always combining takes. Like, I'm able to keep two or three takes in my head. So if, if we don't get past three or four takes, I can usually tell the engineer, go back to take two, and that's where you're gonna find so, uh, but yeah, we, it's not ever done in one take or one pass. It's not, we're not that good. <laughs> Which is not make that it would make it a lot easier. <laughs> Nor should we have to be. Yeah. yeah. That's why, that's why, again, that's why I enjoy bloopers, because you're going to mess up. It's obvious. So you can, it's okay. It's perfectly well, fine. yeah, and when you're doing group records, like when, you know, I was just doing, uh, I, I did a, a show called Gore Media a couple of years ago where I played the lead, and that was, we're all in, in, in the room together. So it's me and Kate Higgins and Sam Regal and all these guys. And um, and even then we're we you know we'll do three or four takes and then they'll sit and yeah for a while and move and go and make notes and then we'll come back and have us do we'll pick this up do that reaction and we'll do the next scene so it's it's uh, it's never done in continuity um, I, I don't think like I said unless you're doing the only place that works is live um, theater and that's because you don't have any record of it so you can't go back and say oh see there was a screw up <laughs> it's just kind of organically kind of accepted and move forward. So. That's why I like theater so much. That's why I need to start getting more into. Yep, theater's good for you. I uh, I, I was just I've been up until uh, I think the last thing I did was a play about a year and a half ago uh, in San Francisco, on Sex and the IRS. I played a uh, a pervy uh, uh, apartment manager. <laughs> Super like intense. Lupin. Pardon? Like Lupin. No, Lupin's kind of fun, pervy. <laughs> this guy was kind of one of these guys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm live on stage playing him. <laughs> so, in fact, I just got asked to do cabaret in San Francisco. I had to turn the door. <laughs> so, what's your favorite? Like, doing a live theater, live film, voice acting, directing? I feel like you've done a little bit of everything. What is your. Um, well, let me work backwards. Film is my least favorite. Live on film. I'm just not great on camera. I, I, really? I, I, I really went after a camera uh, career early on, and I, I did get in a couple of things, and I just didn't. I just didn't work. I was too. Um, I'm theater trained. I'm too. I was too broad, too big. For, gotcha. for film is all very like tiny and in the eyes. Um, in fact, I just did my first camera acting work in 30 years. A couple of months ago in New York, and uh, they'll be done later this year, hopefully. I'll, so hopefully it's not too cringe where they have to <laughs> play a bartender with six lines, and that was it. Um, the I, theater feeds my soul the most. It's uh, it's uh, getting up on stage in front of people and and becoming another character and doing that night after night. For some reason, it doesn't feel like work, and it's probably the hardest physical work I ever do. Um, is it the audience? The kind of it's the audience, the feel back. I do a lot of musicals, so I love to sing, and that helps too. Um, and in terms of voiceover, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the question I usually get is between the acting and directing, which do I like more? And it really depends on the week and the project. I, I like the security of directing because it's steady, and I and I I'm, I'm never not busy. Okay. I, I literally have maybe two out of work weeks a year, which is great for the entertainment industry. Um, an actor, and the, but the acting part is fun, but there's also a lot of that, uh, that uh, the competing for the job and, and, the, and the, um, the audition angst and all that stuff. And even after 35 years, I still have to remind myself. I, do, I have to remind myself what I teach my students about, about auditioning and, and, and maintaining that. So it really kind of goes back and forth. Um, right now I'm leaning towards directing. Six months ago I was just about ready to jump into commercial acting again. So it's it's really uh, and maybe that's why I'm in the right profession because I'm just. How do you feel about 40. teaching? 
I love to teach. I love to teach. I, I, I started because uh, Eric Sherman, who owns Bangs and Studios, needed somebody to fill in for a class that they booked and uh, with a couple other actors who then had to leave, couldn't do it. And I jumped in and I did one class and I loved it. And so I developed a curriculum and now I do three different uh, uh, workshops uh, around the country. I have a, an, an acting class that I teach in LA now called Getting Out of Your Head, How Not to Voice Act. It's for people who have been acting for a while to teach them how to stop that <laughs> so they can get down to their, you know, what acting actually is, which is not acting. Um, and uh, and we're running a, a kind of helping run a school now, so it's uh, wow. called Adventures in Voice Acting. So. Amazing. So, and if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to be in New York in October. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I saw the first three parts of Adventure in Voice Acting. I was With just, a documentary, that's yeah, where yeah, that yeah, came yeah. from. Yeah. And yeah, it really, it, it was intuitive and it was enjoyable to watch. Yeah, they interviewed each of us about three or four hours yeah. on camera, yeah. asking us questions and then cobbled together that, uh, what I thought was a really inspirational. Because they don't mess around with the bad stuff. They don't, uh, they don't hide the bad stuff. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's this, this heartbreaking talk that Stephanie Shea has in it about having not being able to get cast in it. She was, yeah, she starts off by you know, saying there's not you know, a lot of work. She's here for sign yeah. autograph, so it's, it's, uh, um, yeah. it's, it's good. If you're, if you're interested in the profession at all, it's, it's really something to watch. Yeah, and I think you can find it like free on YouTube yeah. now. Yeah, for the first couple <laughs> I remember she was saying there's not, least which, when you see a four foot eleven like Asian walking in for a role, there's only so many limited roles you can grab, so. It's kind of funny, because um, the, there was one day where uh, we were doing a show, and right before lunch, Richard Epcar was in, and Richard Epcar is about six foot five, six foot six, so he was in the booth, to the point where we have to extend all of the, the, the <laughs> microphone as far as it can to get to him. <laughs> Stephanie was in after. <laughs> oh, so she comes in and just stands up to the mic and looks. <laughs> and I figured if we stacked one of her on top of the other, it might be. Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's <funny. That's> <laughs> else you guys need to know? How do you. Okay, so let's say you picked up an anime and you're going to dub it. How do you choose what actors, like, how do you know you're going to play Stephanie Schaefer? Like, how do you choose who does what role? Well, um, I, I used to cast. I don't cast anymore. Uh, Bang Zoom, where I do most of my work, has a casting department, and most of them do that. And what the casting directors are looking for in anime is someone who sounds reasonably close to the right age and personality. That doesn't mean the same sound, because we <coughs> express things differently. Women's voices are a different pitch in Japan when you speak Japanese and when you speak English. It's just the way it is. So, um, so you're looking for someone who's going to match it vocally and emotionally. And also it depends on how complex the character is. If you have a, a character that's deeply complex and you need a lot of nuance and all that stuff, then you're going to go to the actor that, that you know can pull that off, that can do it. Um, if it's something that's a little bit more one-dimensional, then you can try a new person out and, and see how that works. So it really depends on the people you know, and, um, um, and there's also an audition process as well. I mean, if we don't have them, they'll always, they'll always send out auditions and stuff like that. So, in fact, I just got cast for something this morning for something I auditioned for a couple days ago. They sent me an email today. So it just, you know, it's a, actually a live action. <laughs> Thing. It's, it's weird. It's just the word walker is in it, but I don't know what that means. Whether are we talking about what I think we're talking about? Or, I don't know. Let's see. Well, it's union, so that's it's it's major. So, so I have no idea. Um, so that's the process. It's it's really a matter of uh, of kind of guessing. There's a lot of guessing going on, and this is one of the things I teach in my classes. The, the, the secret. I'll save you three hundred bucks. The secret. The secret to show business. Everyone's guessing. No one actually knows what they're doing. Some people are better guessers than others. <laughs> Steven Spielberg is a really good guesser. Okay? <laughs> but anytime we're in the booth doing something, or on stage, or on a, in front of the camera, we're all figuring it's going to be good and hope that people like it, but we don't know. So even in the casting process, it's a little big, you know, God, I, I'm pretty sure this person can handle it, but I don't really know and until you get them in the booth and try. And it's very rare you replace people, but sometimes you have to. You have to. I've been replaced. I, I got replaced twice, once early in my career because they asked me to do a British accent, and I can't I can do that. But then they said, oh, we screwed up. It's actually an Irish brogue. And, you know, I couldn't do it. And I'm sorry. Bye. And the other time I did a, a documentary. I, did, I narrated a documentary about, I was real serious about the... Uh, Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia back then. Oh I mean, it's heavy stuff. 
And, uh, and I really worked hard on it. I mean, I listened to Sigourney Weaver doing her stuff. I, I wanted to get that air of detached yet interested, you know, that they, yeah. that they were looking for. And we, and we worked hard on it. And about six months later, the trailer for it was going to be released, and out comes the trailer, and I got an email, the trailer's out, and I listened to it, and it's not me. Aww. I got replaced by Jeremy Irons, <laughs> who, by the way, after listening to him, I'd have done that replacement too. That's <laughs> he's, pretty, wow. he's pretty amazing. So, uh, you know, if you're going to get replaced, you're going to get replaced by somebody really good. <laughs> like, All right. I hope that answers your question, but it's, yeah. it's such a crapshoot that we, I, I wish I knew. Just some, there are some people that have a, an instinct for it. Um, the, the woman that works with me um, at Bang Zoom on Adventures of Voice Acting, uh, she's got this this sense when when we're when I'm in a classroom and I need to cast people for something, I'll toss it to her. She's just got this innate sense that you can do this, you can do that, you can do that, and it's, she's almost always right. So you look, for, and if you have that sense, go to Hollywood, become a casting director. You won't get rich, but you'll make good money. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? How does it feel playing Loop on the third again? It was fun <laughs> to come back. You know, it's it's a character that I walked away from ten years ago, and uh, there's been several people that have played him since. And to get asked to come back, and not only that, but that with the original cast that we worked with, with yeah. one exception. Yeah. Um, um, it was a lot of fun, and it was interesting because the episodes are very different. Because these episodes, Lupin was done in Japan; it's been done, but it's so popular in Italy that an Italian production company got together the money and hired them to remake to make more of them, and that's the ones that we just did. And they all take place in Italy as a result, um, and they're they're a little bit more love for it and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a secondary love interest. Lupin gets married. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of different things happen. So um, uh, it was a lot of fun, and to work with you know Richard and, and, uh, and Michelle Luff and those guys. The only person we couldn't get back was Dan Lorche. Dan played the original um, Zenigata, Aww. so he was the one that did that kind of thing. You know, I love his voice; I can imitate him. Um, but he retired, Aww. so uh, we so uh, we got somebody else to play him. It's a hell of a way to get an, in uh, an anime back on the air. It's not even on the air. We did 26 episodes in February. I have no idea what's happening to them, where they are, what they... All I know is that we did them with unadapted scripts, which, which I normally would refuse to do, but because it was Richard and Lupin. I think it's on Crunchyroll. Is it on Crunchyroll? Did it get there? Okay, so it's on Crunchyroll. <laughs> so it's somewhere. Nobody, so, nobody tells us anything. Thanks for the noise, guys. So, good. Well, good. I'm glad somebody's getting to see it. Is there uh, a character you've played that, like, what is the character you play that you love the most? That you're like, oh, this is the most endearing to me, and then the one where you're like, I have son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> oh, oh my God. Um, like, why did I take this role? Like, oh, you have one. It's like, ah. You obviously love me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I or play a lot. Of, that really just stick out in your mind. That, like, well, right now it's interesting because I'm I play a lot of dads now. I play okay. a lot of dads and villains, and I'm playing in Naruto. I'm playing a dad. But he's a cool dad. <laughs> so, so uh, <coughs> uh, I, I don't know. The uh, uh, probably Rick. My first, my first big role, which was Rick Hunter, is probably the most endearing to me because it's probably the closest to me as a personality. Uh, and uh, and we were. I was very young at the time, and when I did it, and he was very young too. And it was kind of a nice symbi. I listen to the acting now, kind of cringe because I'm a better <laughs> actor now. Um, <laughs> So that's probably the most, the, 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 the most son of a bitch. <laughs> God, I've had some good ones in the last couple of years. Um, Ukiora, probably. Oh. <laughs> Just because he's, he's, psycholo he's psychologically <laughs> evil and he's creepy and he has no soul. And, uh, or emotion. <laughs> no emotion, but yeah, but see, that was the challenge of it. Yeah, yeah Bleach, Bleach. Yeah, Ukiora, yeah. He can't have, he can't express emotion because he has no heart. He's got a hole in his chest. Uh, it's, it's also his throw, throw, it's yeah. also his trade of death, which is why he has no emotion. Yeah, but he is emotional in his behavior. So the balance and the director and I, what we worked on was trying to find that. Okay, so the biggest direction I got was less acting, less acting, less acting, more monotone. Uh, <laughs> now that's boring. I need him to feel more. <laughs> so learning how to how to be kind of monotone, and have all this emotion right under the surface, but not show it. Um, that's that was really difficult, to, and it's the basis of the acting class I now teach now. That's where I picked Start up that off. technique. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's the uh, it, that's the hardest part, and um, 
so that's probably why. Plus, there was this scene where he's trying to make, he's got Orihime as a prisoner, and he's trying to make her eat, and she's refusing to eat. She's doing a hunger strike. And it was so creepy because it was almost sexual oh in the way, and, and abusively, in a bad way. Oh. Abusively that way, and yet it was about food. Yeah. And it was, it was oh, I'm like, finished it, I'm like, I want to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the director says, let's take a break now. <laughs> yeah, that was a great fight, actually. <laughs> My best death, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My best death. He finds love in his last words, his last sentence as he turns to dust. It's, it's great. Have you uh, ever had anyone come up to you like, oh, this character is so great, and you're like, yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's everybody, yeah. I, I ran into a couple people last con, they were like, oh, I was in the show? <laughs> yeah, people put stuff in front of me to signs like, am I in this? They say, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or, or one like, uh, and one got popular, I don't even remember doing it, it was called Xenosaga. And there's a character named Tony, and I played Tony in Xenosaga. And I don't remember it. Yeah. I don't remember the show. Back. I don't remember the one. I don't remember any of thing. And people are like going and talk like Tony and Zeno's talking. Uh, <laughs> was I in that? I don't know. Like, here, here, I got I got Just hear under 200 it. roles in IMDb right now, so it's kind of hard to remember them all. Oh yeah. And a lot of them are just this. On your, uh... so a lot of them are just this. Huh? That's, that's the whole world. <laughs> Right, yeah, no, I remember, yeah, it was congratulations on your top 20. Year. Thank you, yeah, yeah that was pretty, life. that was a big surprise. Um, top awesome. 20 of all time, I knew the voice list for male oh, actors, yeah. So, yeah, I was in good company there, too. So it was nice that you also remembered some of those old timers. So now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still remembered. <laughs> well, look, it's that kind of the business, you know. I mean, there was a time when, uh, when I was first doing these things where I, you know, fill a room like this up and people would follow me around like I was Vic Mignogna. You know, <laughs> but uh, you know that that time is long past, and um, and, uh, and it's different now. So it's it's uh, it's I'm kind of just grateful to still be around, you know, well, I'm, and still be relevant enough to be invited to these things. <laughs> well, no, it's, well, it's it's funny because as soon as I saw your name pop up on the website, I was like, oh my god, because of Attica Seven again, and it's just. I, yeah, no, be, well, yeah, it was the first uh, anime that got me enthralled in anime, and uh, again, you just did fantastic work directing that, so yeah, Thank as soon you. as I saw your name, I was like, there, right yeah. there, that yeah, one was going. Gurren Lagann, we had a lot of little funny little things we threw yeah. in there. There's a scene, there's a transition in Gurren Lagann where they, they, they came to the surface, and there's like a seven-year jump in time, and suddenly they're living in communities in the surface, and the camera starts wide and pushes into this little village, and you're hearing a television commercial going on. And it's about the pig mole steaks, pig mole steakhouse. And you're hearing this Russian kind of song being sung in the background. Well, that's me and Yuri Lowenthal. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed it. I just grabbed it. I love it. Don't doing tell it. anybody. Let's just do it. <laughs> so we just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can ever find the outtakes on Gurren Lagann, find them. They're filthy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Bloom. Leron was the best. Clean. Oh, no, oh. Leron. Oh, Leron. Leron's yeah. bloopers. Oh. Steve Bloom. Being a I had no idea flamboyantly gay man. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I found out that was the same guy who did. Uh, yeah, no, when I found he's out Wolverine, for crying out loud. Oh, he's Spike Spiegel, no, same guy. He, yeah, he's Spike Spiegel. As soon as I realized they were the same person, I was like, N what? Huh? No! <laughs> no, completely different characters. Yeah, yeah, we had so much fun. Oh, no, I just want to look at the bloopers, bloopers now. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the ones that we allow now. Oh, okay, there was okay. ones that we could let out the door. Well, yeah. I, remember, <laughs> I remember for the Annika 7 movie when it aired in theaters, you guys showed the blooper reel, mm -hmm. and I've never seen it since. It's not on the DVD. It's, it's not. I have a copy of it, but that's oh, about, there's a very few copies that, that, that happened. But that was, that, was, that, that was a deal with, that can't. Damn it, it. it was a contract with Fathom. They yeah. could only do it that way. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, no those bloopers were absolutely yeah. terrible. No, I wish I could share. I it's all good. No, I, 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 I don't have money for lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You don't understand the papers that we have to sign when we do these things. Oh, no, we, it's just, you know, the stacks of Well, no, I know. Even when you guys can't, like, say, like, hey, we have an upcoming project, can't say what it is or what I'm doing yeah. in it, or you can't you have to, like, zip, lip yeah. Zip. yeah, that's one of the pages that we have to sign oh, yeah, is the so. NDA. Um, but most of the, I, mo the, there's only one thing I can't talk about, and that's the thing that just started, but that'll, it'll be out very soon. I'm giving hints. It's on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. It's anime. Oh, yep, I know exactly what it is. I've directed, I'm directing it, and I play a part in it. So after that, that's, I'll, I'll that's, say that's about all I can say. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I know exactly which one Do it is. I know it? 
Yeah, I mean, if you've gone through Netflix, or possibly. Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the first Netflix original I've directed, so that's how you know. Great. So happy that they jumped in. I mean, they're the only people, they really made a commitment to, to anime mm -hmm. in a big way. Yeah. It's not just lip service like Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Sorry, I like Hulu, but yeah. Netflix is yeah, Netflix putting is bread good. and butter on our tables these days. Yeah. Absolutely. But Hulu doesn't have, like, I mean, they they get a licensing so they can play it on, but they don't. Original, like nothing's original. No, but they, 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 at first they started to make a real commitment to it, and like they're, you know, having booths at the at Anime Expo and places and things like that. And then suddenly they just died. They just kind of pulled back. They're not promoting. They're just showing it because you, you, you know, it's smart for them to show it. But uh, they're not promoting it, and they're not actively engaged in producing it. Like I'm wondering if it's because of their actual audience who actually has and subscribes to. I, I think it's a slightly different business model. They're more a rebroadcaster than 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 a, than a premium channel. I mean, that's where they come from. But also, I think when Netflix jumped in, I'm not sure they want to fight them in the dollars. It's an ex it can be an expensive fight. So, uh, you know, why so Netflix has more money than Hulu right now. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh yeah. I mean, I know most people have both. You're gonna have one usually at both. Just leech. You watch them. I was about to say she's a leecher. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah, just just Netflix. So you get you get beyond thirty, and it's one or the other. Really? Yeah, by and large, it, it change it, it rapidly changes. It's just under thirty, everyone's unplugging, so it makes more sense for them to have the apps and the streaming stuff. And those people that are like over thirty-five are still kind of tied to the cable box, and are less likely. So they'll they'll pick up. Like I have HBO and Netflix. <laughs> you know, so I have a little, but I don't need Hulu. Now I'm about to drop HBO because I never watch it anymore. So I may pick up Hulu now. <laughs> but but it's kind of like that. And it's an age thing, it really is. Hi. Well, I'm in that age range, but my thing is I, I'm never home enough to really pay for cable. Yeah. Like, it's just, cable's not worth it for me. So yeah. I do Hulu and Netflix. So when I'm in the hotel, I'm like, oh, I should probably watch this before I do this. Yeah. Quick, you know? <laughs> That's it's all changing. It's all changing. Look, we're all going to be streaming here soon. Yeah. It's just the direction it's going. It's cheaper for everyone. The FCC is just about to make some rulings that are going to make cable boxes uh, probably obsolete ultimately. And so everything will come through your Apple TV. Even your local cable will come through your Apple TV or your Roto oh, wow. or something like that. And, and, uh, and it'll all fuse up together. And then we can see how things are defined after that. But I don't think it's going to be free anymore. Unless you're willing to take really bad commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Why is an ad blogger working? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. We have about five to ten minutes. Okay. Right. So, any Just last minute questions? Yeah, what I, was your favorite oh. line in, as one of your characters? Anyone? Most memorable line. Oh, God. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good line. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite line, I don't remember. It's the one when Ukiora died, but I don't remember that one. <laughs> The other one would be, uh, it's when uh, my last line is Rick Hunter. To the stars, Lisa. <laughs> to the stars. And it's really stupid, but it, but it, it, if you've watched the story, it makes sense. It makes you go, like <laughs> 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 I'm still stuck on Lupin III. My mom watched it on me watching it, and she's like, what the hell is this? And I'm just like, anime. Nothing, because she heard, um, Jigen say, oh, leave her, she's just an ugly bitch anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did I hear? Well, Jigen, we know that, but she's my ugly bitch. <laughs> 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 Alright, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Those are the kind of outtakes we have. <laughs> In fact, Richard Epcar actually has a blooper panel that he does at every con where he's at, and it's mostly me screwing up his blue <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Bobo Bobo, because he does that. He oh. plays Bobo Bobo. Bo, bo, bo. oh. I'm so happy I was not in. Yeah, yeah. I remember when that aired on Cartoon Network, and I just saw I was like, nope. Yeah, I've done a couple shows like that. I'm just not good at it. I was just wondering what the hell I was watching. In fact, the only one that I didn't get that I, I was hoping I would get was uh, Kill la Kill, because it's so out there. I thought that would be fun, but Fate Zero came along. So. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know how many complaints about No. Yeah, exactly. Now I was supposed to direct Blue Exorcist as well. Really? And, and, really? And that, I wrote the first two episodes. Okay. And then, uh, and then, I think that was the tail end of Fate Zero. One of the Fates came up, and so Alex got that, and I took the other one. 
So, uh, the Blitz is a good show. It's a good show. In fact, at the very beginning, there's a there's a whole segment where they're chanting a uh, an exorcism, where these priests are and and it was, there was nothing translated in the and it was just gibberish. And since I was the script adapter, and I, I went ahead and researched uh, at the Vatican, <laughs> not the current exorcism, but an old exorcism prayer. So it's not the actual exorcism. I didn't want to freak anybody out. But, <laughs> but there's a prayer that's considered, in the, and it's in Latin. And so I went ahead and adapted that into it. So they're chanting an actual prayer from the Roman, old Roman rite of exorcism. Awesome. In that at the beginning, oh, wow. I'm trying to get rid of the Wait, is it, is it I just like little Easter eggs. That's why I enjoy yeah. these panels because there's always Easter eggs that you find out from all the actresses and actors. It's, it's so cool. Isn't yeah. there another season of Black Widow coming out? Don't know. They haven't brought it to us yet. I thought oh, I, there is. There is. It's all over Facebook. Yeah, I thought there was another season of it coming out. Yeah, there's another well, season of Attack so. on Titan too. Oh. I hope so. No one cares about Attack on Titan. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah I know. That's been coming out for the past five years. Yeah, right. I'm still think, trying to figure out the live action on the last. <laughs> I think I just have one final question. Yes. The so final question. Oh, was. Um, as a teacher, just for last, getting back to the original questions, as a teacher, what classes would you suggest, me personally, as a, if I take as like a minor in theater? Or, um, well, look, you, you need to get some, some background yeah. in theater. Yeah. So, because that's the basis of all of this stuff that we it's do. So, right. even if it's just a, a theater for interest, just so you can get a sense of what it is and what theater is and what's and they're going to give you a line, you know, that theater is uh, creating a willing suspension of disbelief in your audience. But you need to know what that means. And so taking a theater class will teach you what that means, okay? Um, as a writer, you want to take psychology. Not a writing class, a psychology class. I have taken it, it was fun. Yeah, but that because you're dealing with human nature when you're writing. And so you need to understand that almost more than you understand writing. And the rest of it is read, 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 read. Read as much as you can of different styles of stuff that you can, because you absorb all that, and it comes out in your writing. So um, those are the best things to do, and then just write, and know that your first thirty things are just gonna suck, <laughs> but you can't get past suck until you've written them. You know? <laughs> but it'll get better if you have the aesthetic for it. It'll get better, just on its own. Curious, would you? Like what I was trying to do was I was make I, as I was watching animes in Japanese even like while odds are coming out week by week I was taking the episodes and like slowly making scripts for those like that and just getting a feel for writing it and trying to work it out. Well, it's adapting, but yeah, you'll learn dialogue that yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's a nice way to go. Just don't put them online. Yeah, no, got it. <laughs> <laughs> got it. I don't, I, I'm leaving the internet cringing at my own things. I can do that myself. Yeah. <laughs> <Bad>. <laughs> At least I don't have to have those conversations. <laughs> no, literally, I was in a thing with Greg Ayers, and he has a big thing about pirating, and, and was making a big statement about it. And literally, people are getting upset, throwing things. There's death threats. I mean, it was like guys. Yeah. But then I went to a convention in uh, somewhere. I think it was in New York. It was with Bloom. It was Steve Bloom there, and uh, somebody asked what it was. It was our day jobs. What do we actually do for a living? It's like. This. <laughs> you know, this is what we do, and we get paid, which is why it costs money. And it, 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 it seemed that these guys just thought that we just did this for the love of it, like any, like the fan dub guys do. And you know, and that's great, but that's not what we do, and that's why it costs money and why you have to pay for it. So, yeah. Any more questions? I think we're done, right? Yeah. Are we done? Yes. Go ahead. Sorry, we just came in late, so I don't know if you already asked. Like this, but you've been in the industry for a long time. So have you noticed like a big change or shift in the industry then compared to now? Um, it's a different planet now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, when I first started. It was uh, just on the technical side. It was on tape. So we were on videotape. You know, chasing three-quarter inch videotape and watching on audio tape is where we're recording. Um, we're winging it. We're inventing this as we're going. Um, the quality of actor was different. At the time, even I thought if, to be a voice actor, you had to be Mel Blanc. You had to be able to do Bugs Money and, and weird, funny, silly voices. Um, the, uh, the, the amount of work out there and this sort of stuff was minuscule. There was very little of it. Uh, and, and anime, especially, was still known as Japanimation back then. And yeah, very insulting, actually. <laughs> um, it was called that. And, uh, you know, and it was really that stereotype uh, with the people that watched it, the, the, the stereotype anime fan that everybody makes fun of. That was all there was. And uh, now it's, uh, there are people that grew up watching it. So when they walk into the booth as professional actors, they already have a sense of the storytelling and the depth of what's required. The, uh, they, they know the lore and, and, and can spot the, 
the, the, the, the tropes that are used within the show and, and know how to play them. Um, there's so much more of it that there's more opportunity. Um, and because it's mainstream now, and it used to be kind of very fringe, uh, you have, uh, it's open to a lot more, uh, a wider variety of talent now than it used to be. So the fact is we move a lot faster now because of the technology. The quality of the acting is much better because these people come in already knowing that they want to do and they train for it. The quality of the Japanese stories are much better because they've more globalized their stories instead of making them so specifically Japanese. And the quality of their work, the, the visuals and the sound effects and thing, is an order of magnitude better now than it was back then. So in general, it's all gotten easier and better, and that's why there's more of it, and why you guys like it so much, I think. <laughs> that good? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's it, guys. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Take a round of applause.